Hello and welcome to The Wolf's Den. I'm Dave here with Mary Ellen and today we are going to be doing a podcast about a guy that I wouldn't trust farther than I could throw him. Christian Cole. So Dave, before we get into your theory, I wanted to talk a little bit about backstory with Kristen and what we know about him. Like it is known. I can do that. All right, so go ahead. All right, he was born the son of a steward in service to Lord Dundarian. And the marcher lords are often known as the best warriors in all of Westeros. That is the area of Westeros that George has said, it's in the text, has a reputation for producing the best warriors. And Christian Cole obviously is someone that fits the bill. Mm -hmm. The dude is a warrior to the bone. He is a bamf, to say the least. Yeah. Uh, his weapon of choice is a morning star, which is ferocious. <laughs> right. I mean, that's just used to, like, literally crush the other person. Yep. It's kind of like using a war hammer. Do you have to be strong to use one of those? Yeah, you have to be a brick house. You have to be big? Um, yes, if you're using a weapon that doesn't slice and dice... And you, have to be, you have to have force behind it. That's a weapon that really relies on brute strength okay. to s beat the other person into submission. So this is a big guy, dark hair, really freaky green eyes. Like, unbelievably freaky green eyes. So he, he's not from a house? No, it, it's it, based on... No, he, he's not. His father was in, in service to Dundarian. There was no house coal. There is no house coal. We've never met another coal that I can think of. No, plus he wouldn't. He was a king's guard, so he didn't have any bastards or anything. But not, anyway, that, that doesn't matter. Not that we matter. know of. So, all right. So, Kristen Cole was first noticed at a tourney, right? Yeah, there was a tourney at Maidenpool, yeah. I want to say, where he won the melee by defeating the rogue prince, Damon, at the end. What? That's he right. did not. That's right. Oh. He knocked Dark Sister out of his hand with his morning star, and Damon was furious. <laughs> and then, to add insult to injury, he also knocked him on his ass in the joust. Um, and okay. this is where okay. this guy he started it. This is where the guy started angling right here. Okay. Uh, the first thing that he did when he won the melee was give the victory laurel to seven year old, uh, Rhaenyra, Rhaenyra, um, the princess of Dragonstone mm -hmm. and then begged for her favor to wear in the joust. Mm -hmm. So, so this guy's smart. This guy's smart. He's extraordinarily good looking. And he began... And, and little and little Rhaenyra, from a little girl's perspective, this really tall, dark, handsome dude, knight, that just won everything, wants to, um, you know, get, wants your favor. And so, of course, she asked Dad, can he be my sworn shield, right? Well, he wasn't made a Kingsguard yet. It, that took a little while longer, and then he Oh, but he endured, he first endeared himself to, to her. her there. Got it. And then when he became a Kingsguard, she immediately asked... For him to be her sworn shield. Got it. Okay. Okay. Which made... Kind of got him even closer to her. Absolutely. Uh, he was definitely angling that way the whole time. Yep. He seemed hell-bent on getting himself close to the crown princess. Okay. And so he did. And it worked. Mm -hmm. and so, right. Because then he was the sworn shield. And he was with her all day, every day. For everything. Yep. Until, was it when she was six, 16 years old, when she, the, the discussion of who she was going to marry came about? Yes. And, and then her father wanted her to marry... Lenor Valerian. Lenor Valerian, I always forget his name. And he is uh, uh, homosexual. Yes. He's not, he's not even, like, closet Secret homosexual. Homo he's, like, as openly homosexual as anybody in the entire series that I can think of. Because everybody knows. It's not like a secret. It's not a secret at all. Yeah, okay. <laughs> and um, Rhaenyra was vehemently against marrying him. Yes. Uh, but dad, like I was just saying, dad said to her, do you want to be a queen or do you just want to be some regular girl? If you want to be a regular girl, you can marry maybe kind of whoever you want. I mean, you're still my daughter, so I'm going to have a say. But when you're going to be the queen, um, you're going to marry who I'm picking for you right now yes and, and so, we need to re-endear ourselves to house valerian that's very important for matters of state because 
Coralus Valerian's wife was the other Option, candidate. Option, too young was, for Viserys. Because she was too young, right? No, but he was just already married. It was like when they held the Great Council of 102 mm -hmm. to decide if she was going to be the queen or if Viserys was going to be the king. Right. Coralus Valerian yes. threw all yeah, his yeah. weight behind his wife. Yeah, 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 yeah. And then... That makes sense. When it didn't go his way, there was kind of a fracture in the relationship between the crown and Coralus gotcha. Valerian, and who they, was the richest, he... most powerful lord in all of the realm at the time. Gotcha. Uh, he, had a fl he had a navy that was like ten times the size of everyone else's, and he was richer than the, cr than the crown. Uh, so, he was very powerful. So Rhaenyra, um, you know, because this is now, this is at the point where we start getting fractured uh, testimonies of what happened here. Around, start, right around here. We start getting it from three different sources right here. Which are? Uh, the Grand Maester, I think it's Munchen, Munkin. Grand Maester Munkin, Septon Eustace. And Mushroom. <laughs> right. Okay. So the way it goes, we know that a conversation ensued between Viserys and Rhaenyra. In the end, she decided, fine, I'll marry that dude. I want to still be queen. Yes. That was the outcome. We don't know exactly. Some would say, like, Mushroom says he spit, she spit in his face, and then, you know, like, all this crazy stuff. But the bottom line is, she consented. Indeed. Now, here, now, tell me what happened here. Kristen Cole gets involved after this. Okay. So, Kristen Cole, there's a couple different things, uh, theories as to what okay. happened that drove the irreparable wedge between... Rhaenyra and Christian Cole. Okay. Now, I also think that it's very interesting, and just because we were just talking about Mushroom, I'm going to bring it up here. There is an absolutely, like, blatantly tangible difference between Mushroom's testimony when he was in the same place as Christian Cole and when he wasn't in the same place as Christian Cole. Interesting. Like, he was absolutely terrified of Christian Cole. He spun everything... Cole's way when Cole and him were at the same place. But when he went to Dragonstone, Mushroom's tone completely changed, which gives me the impression that he was absolutely terrified okay. of Kristen Cole. He spins everything. Rhaenyra's a whore. Rhaenyra's a this. Rhaenyra's that. Damon's the worst. Damon's okay. this. Damon's that. Kristen Cole is such a noble and pious knight. Next thing you know, the, ne the first piece of testimony we get from Mushroom after he left and went to Dragonstone mm -hmm. is what happened when Viserys died. And Mushroom's testimony about what, what happened at the Green Council. Okay, I'm going to get there. I'm going to get there. I'm going to get there. Throws gonna... the guy out the window. All right, I'm going to get there because that's. I, I got I have a crackpot theory, guys, and, I, and it's going to come out in a, in a minute. But this is not about my crackpot theory. It's really about this. But I, I just want to say. So, what are the accounts of what happened there? I don't care if you don't believe Mushroom here. Mushroom claims that Rhaenyra came on to Kristen. Kristen's too pious. He rejected her. Yes. The other account that we get is that Kristen came on to her, Rhaenyra. Because, and she spurned him. And she said, I'm the blood of the dragon. I'm so sorry. I can't be a sellsword's wife. Yes. I, so... The so in both either accounts, one is the spurned suitor, or one's the, you know, spurned, and the other one is the whatever. Okay. I would tend to think that if we were going to believe one of those accounts, his visceral and outward hatred for her wouldn't be because she came on to him. There's not a man on the planet that takes that gets that angry that a drop dead gorgeous, almost goddess like woman came on to them. Okay, very interesting. That does not exist in the world where a man becomes that angry. Because a freaking Victoria's Secret model hit on him. Okay. I, okay. Um, that's very important that, that's, to know. That's not possible. There's never been a man who got angry because of something like that. Especially a single man. Mm-hmm. Um, okay. So let's go, keep going with your... So then after this, Viserys marries Alicent Hightower. Right? Or no, he's already No, he's been married to her for a while at this point. There's but, already kids. There's already oh, okay. so animosity then, between oh, sorry, the kids. Oh, I'm sorry. Let me back this up then. The strong at the wedding man at the wedding party for Viserys and Rhaenyra, or not uh, not Rhaenyra, Viserys and Alicent. Cole gave his favor to Alicent, and he killed a dude at the wedding with his Morning Star. Yes. 
Wh- why did they? Why did he already start shifting to Allison Thumb? Well, in my opinion, he was never actually a Rhaenyra's guy. All right, so this is good. Go ahead. Um, I think that the first big clue is his most distinctive feature being his green eyes. Okay. Then yeah. there's his name. Cool. Christian. Christian means follower of the faith, essentially. Right, follower they- of, of Christ. The faith is based on the Catholic Church. He, his name means follower. Mushroom calls him pious. Yep. This is a faith-based conspiracy to destroy the Targaryens. Absolutely. This guy came in, started immediately trying to mess with the crown princess, getting himself close to her, getting himself close to her. It does seem entirely plausible that his job was actually to get into her pants and ruin her reputation so she couldn't be queen. Yeah, when, because that, that when would... When he that failed would... to do that, he didn't even hide the fact. The next day, he was Allison's number one supporter. What do you mean By the, the next time day? the next day happened. What do you mean the next day? When, Why did he wear her favor in the thing? That, that's when there started to be a, a divide between Rainier no, and No, it her. happened right then. Oh, all right. It wasn't that wedding either. That wedding was already long gone. Oh, so, th- so this is right around this time period then? Yes. This is another wedding, not Allison and Viserys. I'm, no, I'm it's sorry. not Allison and Viserys. Right, I, I can't remember what wedding okay, it was. Okay, but there was but a it, wedding it, feast. It was a wedding feast. And then it became real and, public. And Kristen he... Cole killed someone in the melee. An important someone in the melee. Yeah, some Joffrey Lawnmouth or something. Yes. Yeah. Who was wearing Rhaenyra's favor. Okay, there you and go. And he crushed yeah. the guy's skull. <laughs> okay. That's basically um, a, a kind of like an enactment of the uh, greens and blacks right there. It's kind of like a metaphor of like a foreshadowing. Yes. Because he was, yeah. And it seems to me, like I was saying a minute ago about Mushroom, Mushroom seems like he was terrified of him. Mm-hmm. It's never said, but the incredible difference between the way Mushroom paints Kristen Cole when he's at King's Landing, where Kristen Cole is, and when he gets out of there and becomes a member of Rhaenyra's court... His account of him is like, couldn't possibly be more polar opposite. Like, he was terrified to tell people what he thought of Kristen Cole when he and Kristen Cole were in the same place. Yeah. Because you know how everyone thought he was simple-minded? Yep. Kristen Cole might have said things pretty cavalierly right in front of Mushroom. Mushroom is three feet tall. This guy's a brick house, terrifying guy who it doesn't seem like there's maybe even a single guy in the realm at this point that could fight him one on one and not die. If you're if he's knocking Damon over and winning like what no, there's like not Damon is among the best warriors and he kicked the tar out of him. Yep. So this guy it just seems to me that he was never actually a black. This guy was a plant whose job probably was to deflower Rhaenyra and do it so in a manner that would go public. Right. To ruin her reputation. And if you look at what the Greens were doing beforehand, they were spreading all these rumors about her. Oh, absolutely. They- uh, she was going to live sex shows. Her uncle was teaching her how to give blowjobs. And involving uh, mushroom. And involving mushroom. And all of these tales were being told of her from a young age, too. They were trying to paint her as a little whore. Absolutely. That is unfit to sit the Iron Throne. Yes. That was their goal the entire time. Right, because like, like kind of like with Cersei with the Walk of Shame, if you kind of strip any dignity like that from a woman... Not that a guy would be any different, but, like, really in in a very um, medieval world like that, if you can kind of make the girl seem just, like... A wanton or whatever they call it. Yeah, 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 yeah. They, uh... Yeah, they were trying to destroy her reputation since the moment the Hightowers got to King's Landing. They arrived in King's Landing and immediately started going to town on her reputation. First, they went against Daemon. Because they were trying to drive the wedge between the two brothers. Yeah, it's the same thing. Like, Zanies, Magor. And, While they were waiting yeah. for, to hopefully get their own heirs on their side. Once they got the heir, 
Once Allison just... started giving birth to kids and they were boys, immediately they started just absolutely shitting all over Rhaenyra. Of course they did. She's a whore. She can't do. She can't. She's unfit. She's a whore. They bothered Viserys so much. He removed Otto Hightower. That he goes, Otto Hightower, get out of King's Landing by the end of the day. Because I don't know how many times I can tell you this. Or I will and, kill you. And I literally, I've had enough. Like, you guys don't stop. You're relentless. You will not stop. I've told you I care not to revisit the subject. It's settled. I said to you before I even married her, I am not marrying for matters of state. I already did that. This is a marriage that I just want. Yes. I made that, ab he made that abundantly clear. He even said that. This marriage is, I already married for matters of state. Yes. He clarified. Right then and there. He said it. This is not a political marriage. This is a marriage. My political duty, marriage is already done. I already have an heir. And that's that. And that's that. If, this is for God forbid, something happens to her, I can revisit the subject. We but can revisit if, this. But I'm not doing, I'm not revisiting it. But as long as my daughter lives. And he, and he wasn't just like taking it kind of passively either. No. This it, wasn't passive. Mm-mm. He had her sitting at the throne when he held, at the bottom of the throne when he held court. He brought her to his small council meetings. He was teaching her to rule. Absolutely. He was going to make her hand, but he goes, no, nah, I can't because you know what's going to happen? There's, it's going to be a complete shit show. More with, fighting. Yeah, he's like, he was going to make her the hand. He wanted to. But he couldn't because Alicent and her, God knows what would happen. And then the kids come and then, you know. Well, the last time that the kids were together... Aemon one eye became Aemon one eye. Correct. So he decided that he was just... It was just not going to work out. Like, I, I can't do that. But you know what he said to Rainier, And he said the same thing to her when she was trying to cause, like, you know, to have, like, a little bit of a fit over who she was going to marry. He goes, listen, I made you my heir. Do you want to be my heir or not? Because I can unmake you my heir like that. That's See, that's what people don't get. Not you guys. Like, not you guys, I'm saying. But, like, in general, in our comment section, people are often saying, like, but what about the Great Council? That's nice. That's what that king chose to use. But then the new king can say, I don't care about that. This isn't like, you know, precedent like in the United States with laws and stuff like that. No, they don't it's, live in a republic. Right. It's a it's a monarchy. Where his word is law. Period. Period. There's no debate. There's no argument. There's no council. So he There's said no the same anything. thing to her. He goes, if you want to be a queen, you're going to have to do what, we're, what I'm telling you is going to happen here. Otherwise, I'll just unmake you my heir. Your choice. According yes. to one of the testimonies, that is what he said. And I actually believe that because on that issue and on, on succession and things like that, Viserys was a good king. He was an amiable dude. He'd hear you out about 99% of things and at least like consider your point. On this point, he was, could not be moved. No, when something was important... He made a decision and there was no changing his mind. Yeah, and he, but he would hear people out. With that decision, he didn't need to hear anybody out. When his wife died, he immediately... When his first wife died. Yeah, Emma? Emma Aaron. When Emma Aaron died, he goes, all right, I want the papers. If it, I'm drawing up right now, officially, Rainier is my heir. Period. As soon as she died. And then the baby died. Aegon? Or, uh... I don't remember what the name was. Maybe, uh, Bela. Uh, I don't, it doesn't matter. But when his son died, shortly after Emma... I think they might have named him Baylor after his father. Yeah. Yeah, the Spring Prince. He had, uh... It was Balon. Um, he had, uh... He, he had that drawn up immediately because before he got married to anyone else, he wanted that to be abundantly clear. And then he made it, he reiterated. Like a thousand times. This, this is, is not a is. matter of state marriage. Yeah. And then he, he settled it like a million times after that when they kept bothering him. He was like, you're going to shut up. Right. Okay. So is bottom awful. line is we think that he was a green supporter from the beginning that infiltrated the black camp prior to the green really making a play for the throne i think that he was there in preparation i think his job was to wait it out until she became a woman grown mm -hmm. and then take her maidenhead that was his job mm -hmm. really pious people like we've already seen it the faith has the ability to rabble rouse they, it's like uh, the medieval Catholic Church. Most of the information that people got in the medieval world came to them from the church. Mm -hmm. Sundays, you go to mass. Yeah, you do all the things. Your life kind of revolves around the church. The church people are the ones who are literate. 
when an announcement is made, the words get sent to the church because there's the person who can read in the town, and that person reads it to the town because most people couldn't read. That's why Jaharis, when he said, I'm going to fight word with words with words, he sent holy people with, and with a message to just preach this. And it was perfect because that's how most people were used to getting information. Yeah, it is perfect. You could write up a thing, like Stannis, he wrote up all these things, and uh, somebody, I think it was Davos, goes, you know nobody can read this, right? Like, I could post this uh, everywhere. But no one can read it. No. We need people to go around and read, that and shit. read this yeah. aloud in <laughs> yeah. front of everyone. Yes, because that's the, really interesting. Because it's a mostly illiterate world. It wasn't even until... Really, the early 19th the century. The early right? 20th century. The early 20th century yeah, where okay, it started yeah. becoming a thing where more people were literate than not. <laughs> right. It's like now in, in the world that we live in, at least like in the Western world or whatever, there, it's like, extra, like you can't even believe it if you bump into an adult that can't read. And even those that might be somewhat Ill- like illiterate, they have more letters and words than then like than people years did back years in the day. Ago. It looked like scribble. It looked like nothing. It just it, looked like shapes on a page to these people. Yeah, it's like uh, in Vikings or something. That or when they find like the thing that or well, yeah, the yeah. Last Kingdom, he goes, "This is magic." Like, like this the, is this is words without voices or whatever. Yeah, and like exactly so words without sound voices without so, people or whatever like this is like, like so that's how this? they did that so somebody goes around right so all right so the faith's very powerful they use grassroots movements they use their preachers and their holy people to go around and rabble rouse and get and in not propaganda what kind of propagandize no like, it's propagandize yeah uh the public yes so basically that's what happened and he we think that he was always in now mushroom does refer to him several times as pious right he refers to him at least once as pious okay so here's now, okay. Which I think is a huge clue because if you accept our notion that the Dance of the Dragons is a faith-based Absol- 100%. civil war yeah. designed to destroy the Targaryens. Divide and conquer from within. You can't beat dragons. You have to have dragons you beat dragons. You have to dragons. fight dragons with dragons. So have the dragons fight each other. Boom, done. And this guy was the key to their whole thing. Or he was at their least, general. He wasn't once the, the key, war the key started. was Allison. The key was that whole yes, thing. Yes, Allison, if we're they correct They moved about Allison that. in early, just so why not move another dude in early? They had Otto Hightower there in early. Like, you know, they're moving their people in. Yes. They're slowly infiltrating the capital. Because you can't just, it's not going to happen overnight. They couldn't tackle Jaharis. Jaharis was too popular. So they knew they, they, like, well, and plus it was moot, sort of. Like, you're waiting. They, because I think that they orchestrated that whole council to make sure that shit was Viserys. Absolutely. You need Viser- Viserys. is the only option. It's the only hope that Allison can move in and do what they're going to do. He was a little gluttonous. His Perfect. Wi- his wife was sickly. Perfect. Was having trouble giving him kids. Exactly. Oh, yeah. This the is whole great. thing was perfect. Perfect play and then you on put that. Little voluptuous Allison and wave him in his face. Yep, just, oh, and I'm just reading, and I've always been here. I've just always been at court. Remember me? I was reading to, to yeah. Harris. Remember I read to your grandfather So the same stuff? thing. She was she was plopped in there way before her time came. And where she became an active participant. And that's the right? way that, like, really good... Coups work. Coups or conspiracies, they're not something that you enact and the whole thing's done in a day. Like, it's not like a mob hit or something like that where you yeah. just whack the boss and now word gets around that you're the dude who whacked the boss and now you're the new boss. No, when you have this a is... long game in mind, you're you're dropping your people in piecemeal, a little bit here, a little bit there. So like then they they're kind of like ex- they're slowly just becoming part of King's Landing. Like you're trusted, you're just always here. Yeah, I trust you. Like what do you mean, you know? Like the people that are in King's Landing are used to you now too. Oh yeah. That's you're, how you're it's brilliant actually. Basically. Absolutely. And I don't know, the way I see it, he was put there right at the beginning. His name and his eyes are the little clues mm-hmm. that George get, gives you. And when you look at his actions and the fact that there doesn't seem to be an honorable bone in the guy's body. He's disgusting. The guy repulses me. Me too. Yet, a lot of the information, especially the early information we get about him, is how noble and chivalrous and all this, this bull crap about the guy. Yeah, it's not true. But none of it appears to be true. In Guess who mind. he trained? Eamon One-Eye, right? Yes. There you go. Big POS. 
Eamon the, Wanai. The biggest POS maybe of that in, the, in the history of their family. May, it might be. He's right up there towards the top of the biggest pieces of crap in the history of House Targaryen I would since say the absolutely. Conquest. 100%. And who Amen. was his biggest mentor? Christian Cole. Christian Cole trained him in the yard every day. The kid modeled himself off of his male whatever. Yep. He wasn't modeling himself off of his father who wasn't Marshall a at warrior all. at all. No. Christian Cole was that kid's mentor, and the kid's an absolute piece of dog shit. Yeah, like goes to like. It was perfect. Like, like attracts like. Yes, he gravitated towards Because a good kid Christian wouldn't Cole. be like, can, they'd be like, can I have a different like mentor, dude? You now, you wouldn't have mind learning how to fight from a guy like that. Yeah, which is all that they really say, but I think there was more to it. So, all right, so now, all right, let me get into this. So, after Viserys dies, okay? Oh, it gets ugly. All there. right, so, first of all, I can't abide the Greens. I just can't. So, they go, they, they call the Green Council, all right? The people present, it's like Alicent, her dad, Eustace, Munkin. Munkin. Beesbury. Or Munkin is the guy who told us based on the account of his predecessor okay. who was killed. But he's the source of the information from the but, Grand but, Maester before him. But the Grand Maester wrote something down. He was a he was a primary uh, he was there. He was a witness to the events. Yes. Okay. Eustace, our other chronicler of this time, was present for these events, correct? They certainly imply that he was. I think he was there. At least at the Green Council. I think he was there because he gives a word for word account. All right, no, he was there. Now this is where it gets. This is where this is where my crackpot comes in. Okay, who's our other chronicler? Mushroom, who was at Dragonstone. Right. Okay. Now, how does Mushroom know what's happening in that room? No idea. Think, okay, when Mushroom's at Dragonstone, a couple of pages before that, you also learn that Mushroom, when he dies, when the guy dies, some some people said that they had been waiting for it, so the servants were told to like, you know, hush, hush, just go to Allison, don't go ringing bells, don't go doing stuff. The second dude, or the second guy says that, um, you know... When Viserys dies, there was... Orders in place. Di- orders in place go straight to Allison. But who else gives bells, us don't who raise else gives alarm. us a plausible alternative for what happened to him? And then Mushroom tells us that Allison poisoned him. How does he know that? Okay. Who in King's Landing is he effing communicating with? Someone in the Red Keep. That's right. Alright, now here's crackpot time. When Lena when Damon Targaryen rogue prince marries Lena Valerian. It says, even Mushroom found her to be beautiful, but not as beautiful as Lanor. Now, later, when Daenerys marries Aegon III, it says the same kind of wording. Even Mushroom couldn't help but think how pretty the little girl was. So, crackpot time. I think Mushroom is homosexual. We never get first-hand accounts of him being with a woman. We know he's a sexual dude. He's often in, like, orgies, and he's, like, at, you know, fucking the, the brothel with the and... fucking crazy Lysini people, and, like, you know. <laughs> but it's never said that he's with a girl. He could be doing whatever, so or he might be bi. Now, here's what I think. I think he might have had a relationship. With... Whoa. <laughs> This is why you didn't want to tell me what your crackpot theory was until we got live. Huh? Yeah. All right. I th- because he blows this guy. And he doesn't start not blowing him afterwards, but he's got accounts. He goes, oh, no, no, no. Kristen Cole didn't just cut off his head. My man, he took that guy and he threw him out a window. And then he did it. He doesn't, he's not bashing him. He's just giving you the truth. Like, Christian Cole wrote to him and was like, yes, or like, I don't know how they're communicating. I don't know what the hell they're doing. But how does Mushroom have any idea what's happening in this room unless he has an inside source? And who would be allowed to stand in that room but those people? It, and they say who's when in that room. When you're plotting potential treason absolutely you don't have servants in the room oh hell no remember we made that point about one of the tywin things yeah when shay was trying to say that somebody heard it from this one without no 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 no. i was like that that, that was three that words a serving person would overheard 
Tywin and his brother Three, talking about and, something that important. And guess what? They probably used minimal words like, yeah, that thing. Yeah, like you know what I'm saying? Like they're they're you're, they're like using like cryptic shit. Yeah, they would talk like Tony Soprano when he's on the phone. Yeah, exactly. He's like, you know the other guy? You know the one with the limp? And he's like, Yeah, dude, got ya. Gotcha. How how can a serving person get something from that? You get nothing from it because that's why he phrased it like that. So if anyone ever overheard what he said, they would have no they idea. They would have no idea what he's he was not talking like about. Lady Tanda said to Lady this one. They, like no, you're like no, that didn't happen. Tywin doesn't do that. I'm sorry. Ty- Tywin and his brother are smart guys. So try again, Shay. So all right, so here's so like because mushroom is giving us an effing testimony. How he has a source, and I think it's Kristen. He, okay. Maybe Mushroom just worshipped him because Mushroom's homosexual and he had a thing for him, so he stayed friendly with him. Something is going on. Mushroom but then when having... he wasn't in his presence anymore, he doesn't start. He doesn't stop blowing him. He just doesn't like say he's like he doesn't start like making him sound negative or anything. What, he... are, you, what are you talking about? The guy who, I mean, uh, Lord Beesbury there, the guy who was the master of coin, going all the way back to Jaharis. Uh, okay, this is where you're he's wrong. Eighty though. something years old. And he's sitting there at this green council, I'm gonna read and, you. and he was repulsed by what they were doing. And Christian Cole killed the guy, an 80-year-old man, okay. either by cutting his throat or throwing him on out of Magor's holdfast onto the spikes. But neither of those chroniclers are judging him. They're just saying, the one dude goes, he cut his throat. Mushroom goes, uh, 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 no, no, no. What he did was he threw him out of a window. He doesn't say that, you know, the mean, like, blah, 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 Cole. He says, like... That's, oh no, you're wrong. He doesn't, like, he's not judging the action. He's just correcting the statement. I personally think it would have been better to just cut the guy's throat. You're judging it. You're up. inserting a, ju- you're trying to insert a judgment when Mushroom didn't give one, is what I'm trying to say to you. Like, okay. you're, so. I, there's no way that you can spin murdering a senior citizen. The, I'm not As saying, anything other than... This isn't an opinion on that, Dave. But there's three accounts. One of them, the guy was put in, in a prison cell. Yep, and then there's one that says he was slow, uh, throat was cut. That guy doesn't issue a judgment on it either. It's just what Mushroom said. You're trying to tell me that he started vilifying Cole. Well, yeah, one minute he was saying how noble and awesome the guy is. A noble and awesome, pious man... Doesn't freaking kill an 80 But how does he man. know what's going on in there unless Cole told him? Someone else could tell him. Okay, this is all I'm saying. I just, all right, I think, A, maybe separate from this, that mom, he was homosexual. Maybe he had a crush or, on Cole. Or a guy who spent that much time at King's Landing is on a first name basis and knows all of the people who, who, are, who serve there and stuff like that. They eventually end up back in King's Landing and he found out. There's, right. there's other possibilities. I'm just trying to think of something. I guess it's not impossible that he could be homosexual because we have no idea. Um, and he, it's just the wording when he goes, even mushroom. That is a weird way to say it. Because like I said to you last week, I said, even, <clears throat> okay, even Xander. I have a homosexual friend. Even Xander thinks blank's pretty. I would say something like that's like, that's kind of like, you know, because he doesn't necessarily, is not necessarily like, you know. Well, if you're not attracted to women. Right. You would, it's kind of like but even. It, but even you think of that person is beautiful. Or like even that dude can say that dude's good looking. Something like yeah. that. Because it's just a good looking person. Period. The, yeah. You don't want them sexually, but that's like a, you but know, like, you look I, like a doll. Like but chiseled. I'm not like dumb enough not to realize that you're extremely good looking. Right. Um, that's kind of the way it's worded to me. And he does it twice. And maybe more. I just, I don't, I don't know. I, I'm not going to say it's impossible. The Christian Cole thing. I'm, I'm stretching gonna, it there. I, I, that, might be, <laughs> uh, that, that might be a, a leap too far. I would have to look at it more. And it was see, just something fun. And see if there's something subtle somewhere that would have told us. That he's, because he's never mentioned being with a woman. Ever. No. I guess it's possible that like Mushroom worshipped the guy because he was just such a badass and like because he's if he's only like he had a crush on him but the thing that i notice is the enormous difference between the way he reports on rhaenyra especially when he's around when he's in the same place as Kristen cole rhaenyra's a whore she's the worst person ever 
as soon as he gets out of there and he's no longer in Kristen Cole's presence, he starts telling you a very different story about Rhaenyra. Because you know what? His lover was, cra- or his crush was cra- clouding his judgment. <laughs> All right, whatever. Uh-huh. I'm not, I'm not going to say really... it's impossible because I don't, I don't actually know anything about it to try to. That was just my crackpot because I was trying to think about that. But anyway, yeah. So bottom line here is I do. We both 100 percent. We don't agree on you know mushroom being. We might agree that mushroom might be homosexual. I don't have Dave on board with him being Christian Cole's lover, but that's okay because that's my crackpot and. Uh, <laughs> it's I've I've never done I've never made what I would call a crackpot theory till today. So that's fun. And um <laughs> <laughs> I I was just kind of I, I thought I knew where you were going while you were teeing it up. <laughs> <laughs> you you were slowly teeing it up and I was sitting here, I was like, Oh mo but what is going on here? Yeah, oh, I'm, I'm doing it. I'm going there. I think she's gonna go for it. Yeah, I did. Yeah. And, 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 then, and then you went for it and I was like, Oh, you, you you really went there. I'm so sorry. Okay. Yeah, it was uh, fun. I go, I was in the shower and I was like, that could, and, and, and this isn't intended to be just like a joke, you guys. Like, I really thought maybe I could be right. And I was like, I can't wait to just spring that on him. Um, but anyway, I hope you guys all laughed out loud as well. <laughs> I, uh, I, I was, I was ready for it by the time you got I got, got there, the yeah. There. <laughs> I, I was like, she's going that direction, I think. There's only one person in that room who she could be <laughs> trying to say... That he had some relationship with. That he had a relationship with. Yeah. It's not Otto Hightower. It's not the nah. 80-year-old guy. No. It's not the Septon or the Grand Maester. No, who are giving the differing accounts. They're eliminated. <laughs> not, I, I don't uh, think it's Allison. Uh, I, I, I guess it could be. It could be Allison. You know, and, and his enormous member had lured Allison into his bed. Or like she just, like, he was just like, they liked each other. He made her laugh. Yeah. Because it is true. That everyone who meets Mushroom thinks he's hilarious. Oh, yeah. He was hanging out. He he was, like, the new, like, little, like, um, ornament with all the Lysini people. Like, he can just adapt to any group. He gets with every group, and, the, and then and he becomes inst- the most popular person <laughs> in the group. Um, like, at the center of that Rogare thing is Mushroom. Mushroom. When, when the brothel gets raided, <laughs> Mushroom's there. <laughs> Mushroom is an extraordinarily so entertaining character. So, it's possible it could be Alicent. That's a... I never thought about that. And she could have been like, you know, as buddy, not even sexual. That was just her, like, little, like, dude, you it's know like, what I'm saying? It's like, and then Chris and Cole just threw him out the window. Yeah. He got up to leave, and he thought he was going to leave. He got near the window, and Cole got up behind him and just threw him onto the spikes in the dry moat. And no one, like, I mean, this is how strong this guy is. Yeah, I don't know how much an 80-year-old man, usually an 80-year-old man okay. has lost a lot of muscle. But, but uh, still. So he doesn't weigh as much as he did when he was 45 or 50 well, no, or something. But, but uh. But yeah, picking up a full-grown man and throwing him <laughs> is um, is not the easiest thing to do. Now, do these... They're always tossing people out of windows in this book. Don't they have bars and stuff? Or, or we just... or No, because they used to be kind of open, I guess. They must have glass, but you throw a person... Now, they don't break like they do in the movies because they're not going... And why are they doing they don't want meetings an actor like, to in, be with killed. an open window right there? Plot and treason. What is this, Varys from the show? I mean, they were doing this meeting Joking, in, in Magor's in the middle, of the, in the, middle, in of the, the middle of the night. But anyway, so yeah, if um, your theory was just like the, he was like another Allison Auto High Tower dropped in early to infiltrate to bring the coup to life. That's what his actions seem to dictate to me. Totally. Everything about the guy doesn't make sense. So if you approach it from it doesn't make sense, a like, it's kind of creepy, and, I mean, he was doing it to be charming, but, like, kind he, of flirting with a seven-year-old little girl no. is a little weird to start off with. I mean... No, that's not it's weird. The, it's the princess, so he was... It's not weird. Trying like, to endear himself to the royal family, so it's not, like, creepy, creepy. But then he started spending all of his time with her, and his job seemed to have been to try to make her fall in love with him. The big thing for me is this. Any person that grows up protecting a little girl. All right, let's talk about that Denzel Washington movie. A man on fire? He would, he did that. Or, spoiler, like, that guy would do anything for that little girl. Kristen Cole could give two fucks about Rhaenyra. That's not normal. So that means you were never, ever, ever emotionally invested in that little girl. Ever. Which means, and, and actually... That's not possible unless you're trying not to be. 
Because even, um, who was his name in that movie? Denzel? Yeah. His name was like Creasy or something. Yeah, Creasy. Even Creasy was so kind of annoyed by this entire project, like this entire mission that he got, you know, to, to protect this little girl. So he was averse to kind of like even developing a relationship, but he did anyway because it's a little kid and you're protecting her or him. Kristen Cole felt, not, he one day dropped Rhaenyra, like never met her. That's not normal. So you're absolutely right. Yeah. I was like, if I had to believe one of the two accounts of what happened <clears throat> that night, or the next day, he hated her so much that he was killing people at a wedding, like, within a week of that happening, and, like, all sorts of crazy stuff. Either one happened. of those stories, you don't hate that girl the next day. You know what it might have been? It might have been at Rhaenyra's wedding. He killed someone at Rhaenyra's wedding. That's what it Interesting. was. Interesting. Uh... He but, like, you're going to be... He killed... Uh, that's who he killed. He killed... Um, what was Rhaenyra's first husband's name? Valerian? Yeah, his boyfriend, Joffrey he, Lawnmouth. Yeah, he killed the hus- the new husband's boyfriend. Yeah. In the melee. Absolutely. Viserys was livid. Viserys could not believe... He's like, we are not Dothraki horse lord savages. What are... This is a tourney. You just killed someone at a royal wedding. Like... like what are you doing? All right, well, I hope you all enjoyed that. Feel free, obviously, to leave a comment below sharing any thoughts you guys have on this and make sure that you like it, hit the notification bell, subscribe, share it, do all that good stuff, and we'll see you all next time.